Aloha golfers! Welcome to Golf in the Cosmos, episode number 36. I'm Kevin Robowski, and here we talk all things McElgrady and Morad. So today's video is another fascinating study. Basically, we have McElgrady, a late McElgrady in the 2000s, teaching Brendan Kennedy who was a frequent attendee of the McElgrady Golf Schools and a very accomplished player and very much a sort of a expert in the Morad swing. And Mac is actually teaching and demonstrating the 1986 modeling of the swing, which is uh, somewhat you know, in contradiction of a lot of the later model Morad ideas which I think were a little more uh, influenced by the golfing machine. And 86, a little bit more influenced on uh, Mac's work with neurology and also with Zavin Manjakian, and also, you know, maybe a little more of a speed and power model, and certainly one that's less complex on the brain and maybe a little more what you might call intuitive. But um, here we see Mac um, emphasizing the recocking of the wrists and basically in golf machine jargon, it's called like the endless loop theory. Um, basically Mac is recocking his wrist, creating a very short arc immediately after impact, creating acceleration um, the wrists recock upwards. They don't close the club face, but very quickly there's a recocking and a breaking of the hands and shoulders so that the wrist can accelerate the club through. Now, this can be somewhat confusing because people might think that this is scooping or flipping, but really Mac makes a really nice distinction here in this video, which you rarely hear, and that's why I wanted to include this in one of the segments. Mac in 86 would describe once you go to P4 on iron shots, from P4 to P5, the feeling is you're gonna hit a low trajectory shot. So there's a downward and forward movement, not only of the weight shift, but also of the upper body and head as well. So you feel like from P4 to P5, you're going to smother the ball as if you're covering it, trapping it, um, de-lofting the club. And then midway from P5 to P8, you're going to back it up and hit a high trajectory shot. So it's like you reverse course in the middle of your downswing. So P1 to P4 is normal rotations, fixation on the ball, centeredness. From P4 to P5, you feel like you're gonna go low trajectory, and then P, from P5, basically all the way through P9, you're gonna feel like high trajectory, right? And this is how to get the divot in front of the ball and, and lean the shaft and still get high trajectory, right? And of course, this is a very sophisticated idea and probably not for the average golfer, but certainly for um, your better player, your scratch golfer, sometimes uh, mm -hmm. uh, tour pros or college players, just looking for that little extra compression on the ball, this can make a huge difference, right? This is a subtle variation that allow yourself to go down and forward, just the initial blip of the downswing, and then back it up and release into the full finish. And uh, so that's kind of uh, an interesting distinction Mac makes in this video. He feels like you're going to, from P4 to P5, you're going to hit it on window number one, low trajectory. And then from P5 all the way through eight, nine, you're going to feel like you're hitting it on window number nine, right? So we usually see both um, the downswing patterns either in one camp or in the other. High ball trajectories tend to hang back. Sometimes uh, you'll see that with uh, junior golfers adding loft to the club. And occasionally we'll see some players lunge in front of the ball and just hit low uh, shots and, and your shanking is occurring, right? But to combine both of those elements, right? Little low blip in the, in the first movement down and then reverse it 
coming back up. Wow, that can be a game changer. And so that's a very fun and uh, um, you know, experimental thing to practice on the driving range. Again, you'll see that, that really nice quick recocking of the wrist that Matt can do it really adds acceleration. But you really need to add that other component. Otherwise, you just flip it straight up in the air. So um, I think this video will be very interesting for a lot of golfers that want to study those nuances. Again, you know, Mac at this era is, well, in the 86 era, it is creating a lot of speed and also a lot of power um, all the way throughout the bag. Of course, I wouldn't do that little movement with the driver. Driver, you're going to stay more behind the ball the whole way. Um, so this is more for your iron shots, uh, maybe a little hybridization with the fairway woods. Um, but uh, driver, you're going to keep uh, your head pretty much behind the ball throughout the swing and create that big, you know, club head speed and swish that we want um, to accomplish. So the difference, I think, uh, in the later Morad, which makes this video surprising because this is in the 2000s, is Mac looked like he oftentimes taught a more elongated arc in the follow through, a more punchy feeling, and, uh, and a, definitely a lower ball trajectory. Um, and I think some of the reasoning he went through that was to keep the ball more in play, basically um, to play more of a control game, more of an accuracy game. And again, this kind of, you know, would, would teeter-totter throughout uh, the years, you know. Um, I think one system is very much good uh, for a, a control game. And, uh, and for keeping the ball in the, in the fairway, fairway finders uh, off the tee, and uh, you know, maybe giving up some distance, but then you know, creating a lot of accuracy and uh, make it uh, extremely um, you know, low and controlled. And so I think that's where the modeling went to in the later years and in the early years in the 80s, it was very much high ball, high speed, you know, going for power. Um, and uh, trying to maximize that. So um, we see the two differences and we see those two going back and forth in style, right? In, in, in the way Mac taught it. So, and then I think there, um, the two patterns have different characteristics. And uh, so throughout the teaching of the golf schools, I think Mac would teeter totter between the two. And so here's an example of uh, a video in the 2000s where Mac is teaching more of the 86 style of swinging. And so I think, uh, you know, it's a, a testament to, again, some of the complexity uh, of, you know, and trying to incorporate the more at ideas and trying to find what works for you. And uh, so this is definitely one of the challenges, but um, it's, it's not something that's either correct or incorrect. It's something that you want to apply the characteristics that work for you and what you're trying to achieve. And sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of both. When I played with Mac O'Grady, um, I was surprised by his ability to change up, especially the driver power. You know, kind of, he, in one round of golf, he would, some holes, just dink the, dink the driver off the tee in the fairway and then in other holes, he hit huge power fades, you know, 300 yard carries. Um, so his ability to change up the power in one round of golf, depending on how the hole looked like, uh, and well, it suited his eye, how much trouble there was, how much wind there was, uh, that was very interesting. And uh, I don't see a lot of modern players doing that. Um, but that made Max's uh, skillfulness, I think, uh, a, a notch above um, the average tour pro. So I hope you enjoy the video, and I uh, will keep you guys in mind. If you ever want to come to Hawaii for a golf lesson, um, come contact me at kmrschoolgolf.com, and uh, definitely like and uh, subscribe to the Golf Channel and um, to golf in the cosmos and we'll certainly give you more content in the weeks and months to come aloha Happy
should have if you have to stop accelerating fast again. Look how fast the brakes. See? That's the endless belt effect. It just goes. For seven, you have a so good the short game. Over here, like this, right? you gotta feel like you're bringing your shaft all the way going to follow through right now. Here, right. Okay. Right, 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 right. Make sure you catch the weight. Now, you have to go a little higher like that. Just sift your spine backwards. That's the right idea. Shift that spine. It's gotta go like this, and then go that one. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, but there was. Nah, your right foot went like this. Totally releasing his legs. <laughs> that thing's gonna stay back like that. For support. Got it? You went like this. Okay. okay. The nice thing is, when you get down here at P6, you'll see this club, I just go. Whoosh. Now you're going to see this in film, you see how fast this thing's coming around and then right back up again. Did it go on like this? Now your upper part of the body is still, still not going back. You have enough thoracic shift backwards. Look. Look. Yeah. So you got to shift your lumbar, thoracic, and sternum for all three of them. We're from the wrist. That should bring the club on a short arc. Like that. Yeah. There you go. Nice little sound effect on your head, on the outside of your spine. You're a little bit of a square. Good. What? Right? That's good. Fresh. What? Fresh. The, the feeling we had before, we explained back in the 80s, you feel like you're, you're going to hit one to one of the downswing, all the way to P6, then P6, P7, you're going to go one to nine. But, but, but then all you're doing is you're cocking your wrist as fast as possible. But you, that's where this looks. So it's window, window one on the downswing, and then window nine on the forward. See? And the only way then that the forces your left shoulder to come down. Otherwise, the moment you start your downswing, you got window nine going like this. But then the problem is you're going like this, look at it. You're there, instead of transferring like this, in the body. These designs look very good, by the way. Wait, when did you get this? Uh, six months ago. They charge you? Uh, no, I traded. You mean you're not on their staff? No. What? No. Oh, all those touring pros come over and they'll help you? <laughs> Donnie Hatt on the boys, your buddy Rinker Rinker, where's he been? I haven't seen them. He's selling real estate now. Fine. <laughs> Wait till that bubble breaks. It'd be after you tell everybody how to play this game. Okay, just talk to the follow through. One more. The last one. The other thing, the physics is, the quicker you cock your wrist, and then all of a sudden you go, you go, you go whoosh, you're like this. And the more your arms this way, it makes you closer and lighter, and everything, you can control the body rotation. If you keep your wrist, start to pull. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that, is that a short arc follow through? Yes. And then the longer arcs are for the, the more long trajectory? You can actually, you can actually do, I'll show you this, watch. You can actually do, you put the ball back in your stance, go like this. You can still put it back in the and knock the ball down too. Watch. Yeah. 
only difference is I have the ball back in the stance more than the other shots. Did you get it? Yes. Look at Trevino and Casper. They have both of them. But their bodies took backwards. Trevino and Casper. And so did Weisskopf and so did Nicklaus and all the other guys. But they released it to a straight line. Casper and Trevino kept it on the head. And they still have this uh, body in the back. If you look at, you look at, you look at Casper's picture, you know what? Yeah. Uh, okay.